Good morning. I'm Marcia Gregory. Welcome to our online service of the Swiss Elm Park Primitive Methodist Church. It is our prayer that you are blessed by what you hear today. Our scripture this morning is from three different places. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 9, followed by John 10, verse 10, and Psalm 34, verse 8. So Deuteronomy 4, verse 9 is on page 275. Only take heed to yourself and diligently keep yourself, lest you forget the things your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life, and teach them to your children and your grandchildren. The second one listed is John 10.10. 10. And it is on page 1,655, 1,655. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. And then our third scripture is Psalm chapter 34, verse 8. It's on page 862. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Well, hey, if, if you're a grandparent today, happy Grandparents Day. How many of you as grandparents woke up today and the, you were treated a big breakfast? You had all type of amazing things at your door. You didn't get Sarah's breakfast? Oh. Oh, you got breakfast, okay. <laughs> On my own, okay. But we, we, we do want to acknowledge the grandparents today and say happy grandparents day. So what do you do on grandparents day, I'm curious. Watch the Steeler game. Okay. What do you do on Grandparents Day? Eat. Okay. Frank, Audrey, what do you guys do on Grandparents Day? Same thing we always do. Okay. Nice. I didn't hear you, Frank. Football. Okay. Now, Yana, I know you say you have a grand dog, and what did he get you today? Nice, nice. He doesn't have thumbs. No thumbs. Okay. That's it. I'm telling you. So she can judge our pets. She can judge the petting zoo, the produce, and the pies, and the chili. So, all right. Sylvia, so this is what? The onion, you said, right? And this is the orange. Okay, I see Sunkissed here. Just kidding. No, I don't. Okay, anyway, glad you're here. And thanks, Krista, for um, leading the service today and for reading the scriptures for us. And uh, I'm going to ask that we could take a moment right now and pray. Help us, Lord, we pray as uh, your words before us to be able to take a few moments and honestly, Lord, search our hearts and see and know and understand your truth and we'll rightly apply it to our life for your glory as we ask this in Jesus' mighty and holy name. Amen. Happy, happy Grandparents Day. So, grandparents, I, I got a question for you. Before you became a grandparent, did you have any thoughts of like what it would be and what that experience would just really be like in your life? I mean, what were you anticipating before you became a grandparent? And then what have you experienced since then? Exactly what you wanted it to be. That one. Oh, what about the other one? Oh, I'm just kidding. Very good. Ron, Patty? Okay. 
Yana's been babysitting all week, right? <laughs> Think about this. In Proverbs, as Krista read for us today, the 17th chapter, verse 6, children's children are the crown of old men and the glory of children is, is their father. So for a moment this morning, as we consider what this is all about, I'd like for you to just uh, consider that grandchildren are the crown of the aged. Grandchildren are the crown of the aged. The scripture teaches us many, many things, but one of the things that I remember about scripture that I heard from my grandfather many times, and this sixth verse is one way that the scripture describes grandchildren when it says, children's children. My grandfather, Herbert, used to make that reference all the time. He never used the word grandchildren. And he would look at me and he would say, do you understand, and he affectionately called us all boy, and occasionally I got den from him, but it was mostly boy, and he says, do you understand how blessed I am that my children's children would be right here? And he said, with all the things that go on in life and all the things that we seek after and all the things that we hope will bring us satisfaction and joy. And I'm sitting there listening to this as a little kid. I had no idea what he was talking about, but I remembered the speech. And he would always say that there was nothing more gratifying to him than being part of his children's children's life. We lived with my grandfather. He lived, technically, I lived with him technically longer than I did my dad. He, uh, my dad died in August of, of, of 1990, and then my grandfather died the following year in February. And I remember my grandfather telling me this one night, you know, my dad was, was really sick with renal cell cancer. And he and I were just, me and my grandfather were sleeping together that night in his bed. And he looked at me and he says, you know, if I could, I would go trade places with your dad right now. And my grandfather was 95 at the time, and my dad died at age 62. But he was so proud of his grandkids, and I always remember that phrase, children's children. And in that, you could see, as he was so proud of that crown, that grandchildren brought to him. And to have that role and have that place in their lives and know that it was from God. And God was using it in a mighty and in a powerful way. The Scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 4, Sarah, in the next slide, teaches us this simple principle, that we're to teach the word to your children, and I didn't put children's children here, but to your grandchildren. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 9, as Moses writes these words of instruction, he says simply this, take heed to yourself, and diligently keep yourself, lest you forget the things your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. And so now he's saying, teach them to your children, and then also to who? Your grandkids. The teaching doesn't stop once grandkids come along, but what happens? It becomes more specific and intentional because grandparents have a special part in the lives of their grandchildren. And I was privileged, as I said, to live with my one grandfather technically longer than I did my dad. And there were five boys in our home, so he wouldn't take us all with him at the same time. But on check day, you know, check day back in the day was a big day, okay? And he would get his check, and then he would take one of us with him. And you ready? We would go to the bank. That was first. And then the next stop, you ready? You got to go to Isley's, okay? And that was the day when you got a tray. Okay, and you put the tray on the rail, and you got to slide down the rail, and they had all this food, that's the tray that it was, they slide it down the rail, and, and, and they had all this food. And you know what Grandpa would always say? Get whatever you want. You see, growing up, we really didn't eat out. 
Okay, eating out wasn't really something that happened. And so when Grandpa would take you for check day, that was one because you might get a couple extra bucks. Okay, and then to go to Isley's and for him to say whatever you want. Wow, that was so cool. So after my four brothers went through the rotation, you were up again, and you got to go to Isley's. Okay, and and he was so proud because he would tell everybody, these are my Grand, well, this is my grandson. And then along that way, as you'd spend that time with Grandpa, he would teach you and talk to you about things that maybe at the time you didn't understand that had their basis right from Scripture. Working hard, being honest, doing the things that are right, doing well in school, being patient, but knowing in the end what really mattered was the things of God. And here was the mandate that Moses was giving the families as they were preparing for, for this life. And he said simply, first of all, know the word yourself, understand what it means, teach it to your kids, but then also know to your grandkids. What, what a mandate, what a privilege, what an opportunity. And then we see what happens as the next slide shows us simply this, that grandparents are what? A part of God's plan to share the gospel. Sometimes we get to a certain stage in life and we think, what, what can I contribute? What purpose do I have? What's my role? And one of the specific things that the Bible teaches is that first of all, yes, grandchildren, man, they're that crown. Grandchildren, yes, understand and know that they're to be taught the plan and purpose of their life according to the word of God and that you as grandparents are part of that plan of God to share them to that child in a way that nobody else can. Now I want you to think about this for a moment. In 2 Timothy, Paul writes a word of, of instruction and encouragement and just gets right down to business. And he says this simply, simply to Timothy. He said, I want you to know how I see in you the things that I first saw where? In your grandma. You remember who Timothy's grandmother is? Lois. I see in you what I knew in your grandma. What do people see in you today? What do they hear in you? Are they things that they can connect to go back to say, oh, yeah, I see that. And in this statement here, as we read, that grandparents are part of that plan of God to share the gospel. Here, Paul sees young Timothy, and he says, man, your grandma, your mom, I see that plan. I see that whole thing unfolding. And you're walking proof that it does work. Now, I hear my girls at different times tell stories about you, Nana, and stories about my mom and the things that you guys heard and were taught and just in that exposure because of the influence that only a grandmother can bring. This morning, I'd like for you to think about your grandparents. Think about the things they have taught you the things that you've experienced through them. And I know sometimes it's, it's not always just, just wonderful gumdrops and, and, and candy canes. But in the spirit of the plan that God has for grandparents, here it is. They're a part of God's specific plan to share the gospel to, to, to their family. Isn't it amazing the things that your grandchildren will tell you that in turn they won't tell their parents? And I guess sometimes as a grandparent, you have to have either the vault or you have to act on it because when you think about it, man, I wonder how many times Lois, as Timothy's grandmother, thought, should I speak to Eunice about this? Or in that capacity is the grandparent just that venting mechanism that they can here and that grandchild can feel confident to know and keep everything in check. I, I don't know. 
But I do know and understand there's a special role, there's a special place, and there's a part in the heart that only a grandparent can provide. So it takes us to the next point where we see simply this. We'll say to our grandparents today, thank you. Just thank you. Just thank you. And as we get older, doesn't that just mean more than ever? Sometimes we don't know what that lesson was about. Sometimes we didn't understand what they were saying. Sometimes we thought they were out of their mind. But then we get to the place and say, oh, that's what they meant. And so on Grandparents Day, we say, yeah, thank you. Thank you for being that person. Thank you for being part of God's plan to share the gospel. Thank you for learning the scriptures, teaching them to our parents, and in turn teaching them to us, modeling them, exemplifying those things. Because we can see your influence, just as Paul saw in Timothy, the influence of his grandmother Lois. But there's a problem. This whole process of just everything going on in life in America was doing what it was doing, and grandparents were being grandparents, and people were just doing the things of life. Then something happened, and you remember this horrible day. Nobody ever thought that this could happen to some place like us. And on this day, we think of how many years ago where you were when that happened, right? It's changed your life. And we can never imagine fully the impact of what that means upon how many people's lives were lost. But it was a horrible time. And you read about these things overseas, you think about them in some other place, but here at home, and that one picture is so vivid in the hearts and minds of many as we think of 9-11. And simply, it was an attack. It was a vicious attack. And it wasn't just a, hey, how are you doing? The intent and purpose behind it was much more than that. In the scripture, in John chapter 10, this is the description of Satan. What does he do? The thief comes only to steal, to kill, and destroy. And when we think back on that day, how many years ago, the intent was not to have lunch. The intent was not just to see how you're doing. But the intent, in many ways, can be summarized just in that one statement of Scripture. And it changed things forever. And I want you to think for a moment right now back to the grandparents, because we're trying to tie in Grandparents' Day, we're trying to tie in 9-11, and we're trying to tie in Fun Fair. <laughs> I'm glad you laughed. <laughs> So how do we do it? Here's how we do it. You see, as grandparents, as you try to share the message with your grandkids, there's an opposing force. As parents, as you try to share that message of hope and love and encouragement through Christ, there's an opposing force. As believers in the world today, you and I are called to share the love and message and hope of Jesus Christ to countless others. Our desire with the fun fair is, yes, to have a fun time and to have the Funfair app or the Funfair onion or the Funfair orange and, and, and really have a good time with these things. But it's also a way to introduce the reality of Jesus because the opposition to that message through darkness is desiring to do what? Steal, kill, and destroy lives. You got to know that. And whether it was the towers in New York or it's on the streets here of Pittsburgh. That objective is still the same. Big airplanes might not be coming through, but the next slide shows us what our battle is against. It's against what? Not flesh and blood, but it's against rulers. It's against powers, principalities, and all these things that are before us to do what? Rob, kill, and destroy lives. 
Yeah. And no one ever thought it would happen when you think back to 9-11. But think about things in our world today on the spiritual realm and in your world today. How many times have you experienced something and when it occurred you thought, boy, I never believed that could happen. I shared this earlier with Frank this morning as we were meeting. Every day, people are slipping into eternity without Jesus. Every day, people have been fed a lie that was used as a means to do what? Rob, kill, and destroy them. And take them away from the promise of that message that Paul was so excited that Lois, through Eunice, taught Timothy. That message that you, as grandparents, as parents, have been called and commissioned to, to teach to your children. Sharon, when you picked a favorite hymn today, I got, the second verse just rips me apart because how precious to hold. That little girl, that little girl, my other little girl, and to know the pride and joy they bring, but there are things out there trying to rip them apart. And that's how we're trying to tie grandparents today, and that's how we're trying to tie 9-11 today, to say it's still real, but in a way, not in that capacity, but against powers and principalities, the, the work of darkness, the prince of the air, who's trying to do the same thing that that previous picture showed us from time, from ground zero. To the hearts and lives of people. It doesn't just break your heart. But guess what? <laughs> it doesn't end there. We don't throw up our hands and say, well, it was good while well, it lasted. No. Because Jesus goes on to the next slide in John 10 to say this. He came for us to do what? Have life and have it more abundantly. This is what the opposition has come to do. This is what I've come to do. The grandparents have been charged with this mandate to make sure that message is understood by grandkids. Moms and dads, that newborn baby. Last night, Sarah and Krista and myself were at the Irish Festival. I guess I told you that. And on the way out, this, this lady is, is in tears. And she's concerned about her new baby. And as a mom, and as that family unit, that she's going to teach that baby right. And how can she be sure? And, 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 and in many ways, some of the, just the pressures of, of just the world were, were weighing upon her. As she, and that precious little baby girl is just laying there, that, that she does the right things and teaches her the fear and the admonition of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it was a sweet conversation that we were able to have. And today I'm going to send her a message and tell her, look, I was reminded today of something else in church because of a hymn that somebody picked. That newborn baby, to feel the pride and joy she brings, but greater still the calm assurance this child can face on certain days. Why? Because he lives. And this is what Jesus said, I've come so that you can have this, and not just have it, but what? Have it more abundantly. Years back when I was involved in church growth and planting on the mission level, it would really break my heart to walk into a church and you're trying to do an assessment of where people are and where they're at in their walk with the Lord and how we could be of help to them. And sometimes the answer was, well, we can't help you. Uh, you don't want our help. Or, yes, please, and, and we could be part of it. But to hear the answer to the question, hey, how are you doing? And their answer is, oh, we're still here. I see that. But that's not what Jesus has called us to be, what? Not just still here, but to have life abundantly. And, it's not, and we're not talking about what's in the checkbook or how many acres or how many things we have, but it's the joy and peace in our heart to know that no matter what happens, I'm his child and I have life. Because the opposition wants to steal it from you and, and destroy you and tell you you're nothing unless you have that. So on Grandparents' Day, yeah. Mom's Day, Dad's Day, every day. 
9-11, we had a good thing going until someone came one day and says, I'm going to rip it from you. Don't let no one do that to your kids. Don't let no one do that to your family. Don't let no one do that to your church. Don't let no one do that to you because we might not have had the fun fair today because we're going to have a better one. Okay? Jesus said so that you can have it more abundantly. What's the next thing that happens? We get to the place where, as you read from the 34th Psalm, you sang. I could watch that video all the time from Broken Path. Wow. The Cymbalists, if you ever want to read a cool story about the Cymbala family, Jim Cymbala used to play uh, uh, Big East basketball. I had to remember which division, Big Ten, that was Big East. And uh, I watched him play how many years ago. He was a pretty good player. But Jim Cymbala, after he left uh, uh, college, he, he went. And he and his wife started this work there in, in, in New York City. He was basically sent to a place that they thought didn't have much hope. And his wife thought she could lead a choir because the standards of choral conducting, she breaks all the rules, OK? She doesn't follow anything they say you have to do and be to be a good choir director. But guess what? Look at the Brook Tab Choir. So you can stick that in your ear. The bottom line is, if you want to read a good story, read about the Cymbalists and what they've done in New York. But this song, Taste and See, that the Lord is good. Isn't that our mandate today for the fun fair? Isn't that our mandate today for life? Isn't that our mandate for all these things? Here, taste it, see it. I love, I haven't been there in a while. I go to Monroeville Mall. And you know what I like about Monroeville Mall? Paul George would love this. Man, you could eat and not even have to buy anything, okay? Everybody's out there with their samples, okay? Okay, I think Paul used to go to Sam's Club to eat lunch for free, right? I mean, it, he, he knew what they were offering on certain days, the aisles that the drink would be in and the dessert and the meat. And, and Paul says, I, I go, I love it, you know, and it's like, well. But, you know, at, at Monroeville Mall, at that one Chinese place, they were always offering the, the chicken, right? General Tso's chicken. Yeah, I'll take one. Okay, I'll take Yeah, and you walk around and you could really eat. And what's the intent? For you to taste and see and know that what we're selling is good. You see, if you're, t if you're confident in that, what happens? I'm going to share it with you right now. Taste and see. It's really good. Because you know what? Sometimes restaurants are given a bad rap, right? And you said, huh, so-and-so, no, you taste it for yourself. And isn't it unfortunate sometimes that in the world today, through the prism of the world, the way they see things, that the church has been given a bad rap. The church isn't really seen and understood for what it's truly all about. And so... Taste and see that the Lord is what? A bad guy? That he's suffering from just some cognitive issues and he can't fully be trusted anymore. So we're going to have to rewrite the Bible. We're going to have to rewrite the purpose and plan. No. That the Lord, he is good. And so we get to the place where we simply say this. Am I offering people that opportunity just as the attendant there at Monroeville Mall might be or that worker at Sam's might be? Taste it for yourself. See for yourself that it's good. Maybe as someone comes next week, they're going to eat a hot dog or have the hamburger or the snow cone or the possible cotton candy. Frank makes an awesome cotton candy, by the way. Or they may just sit and eat chocolate. Or they just may bounce in the balloon or have their face painted and turn out, you know, just amazing things. And all of a sudden, they walk away from this and say, you know, whatever that was, it really touched me. And then they get halfway down the sidewalk and says, but I forgot to play cornhole, so i got to get back and do that. because they're, you know, Wherever it is, I don't know. Or maybe they'll see the science G or be touched by Matt's illusion. But the intent behind it all is to do what? For people to taste and see and know that the Lord is good. Because remember, the other side of that objective is Someone who wants to kill, steal, and destroy. Our mandate as individuals, as grandparents, as parents, as believers, is to share that message and taste and see 
that he's good. And, and how can we best do that? The next slide shows us. It simply says this. Magnify the Lord with me. In Deuteronomy, we read that passage of Scripture where the charge was given to your children, to your children's children, to teach the Word. Moses talked many times about how the lifestyle of the believer should be, and you know a lot of that description, what it centered around, was the conversation they would have with one another. And the conversation that Moses was talking about simply centered around what thing? The Word of God. Talk about it. Share it. Proclaim it. And so as we magnify the Lord through our lives, through what we do, through what we say, may it all center around that common understanding that this is Almighty God. And so as we magnify and as we pronounce and make it known, well, last night, how many of you have ever been to a uh, movie at the Terry Glass Furnace? Me neither, okay? But anyway... I found out what they do. This is pretty amazing. They have this, this white material across the one building adjacent to the blast furnaces. And this material is probably, I'm going to say, maybe twice as wide as the width of our church and maybe twice as high. And apparently they have movie night at the Cary Blast Furnace where you pull up in the car and they're projecting that image up. It's like, wow. And they had the Irish festival image you know, projected up on there. And it was amazing because that little image, as you saw people that worked there, their shirts had it right here. But when you looked up and you saw it on the big screen, there was no mistake. And it was the Pittsburgh Irish festival. And that's, to me, what magnifying something is, making it happen. And what are we going to do? We'll see this. We can magnify the Lord as we do this, as we thank God for our grandparents, as we thank God for their lies and for their impact and influence they've had upon us and for our country. You know what? There's still no greater place in the world to live than right here. There's still no greater place in the world. This Judeo-Christian nation, we praise God for it, but we give great concern as we lift it as well and we say, God, here's what's happening and you know this. Because there's an objective to kill and to destroy and rob us of all these things and we remember that from 9-11 and we think that could never happen. Friends, that's always real. But we don't live in fear, but we also know that there is an attack upon the souls and the well-being of each person. And so you and I have been called to do what? Proclaim his goodness and his love and the message of Almighty God. So today, on this day of Grandparents' Day, on this day of 9-11 Remembrance, on this day of the postponed fun fair, I pray that we could weave all these together and be glad for these reminders in front of us today and know that we have a privilege right now to serve and to honor and to bring glory to the kingdom of Almighty God. You just sang earlier, there's coming a day when there's going to be no more heartache. There's coming a day when all these things that perplex us and trouble us at times, it's going to be gone. But until that day, until that hour, magnify the Lord with me. Come, let's exalt his name together because he's good. We've got grandparents. We've got an amazing country. And we got the privilege to tell the message of Jesus and his love. Make the most of today. Pray for next Sunday. You betcha for that fun fair because there's going to be the fun fair app, the fun fair apple or onion and the uh, orange and many other things. But most of all, the presence and power of Almighty God will be there just as he is here today with you and me. I don't know where you're at today in life, but I want to encourage you don't walk out of here today without being at peace with him. Don't walk out of here today without knowing the peace that passes all understanding. Don't walk out of here today without knowing forgiveness and love and mercy that comes through Christ. Trust him, know him, exalt his name, and know that he's blessed you. And Today he may be asking you to consider him in a way that you never have before. Let's exalt his name. 
but let's draw near to him and let him have his way in our heart today. Please pray with me. Father, we love you and praise you for Jesus. We praise you for our grandparents. We thank you for this amazing country. And we thank you for the privilege to know you. We're praying today for someone who may not know you, for someone who may not never ask Jesus into their heart to forgive and to cleanse. We're praying today for the struggles that we have in life that sometimes cause us to become weary and throw in the towel. But may we be reminded that you have not come to rob and kill and destroy, but you've come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And so we pray for that victory today as well. And we pray, Lord, for the privilege that you've given each of us that we would make the most of the opportunity to encourage people to come and taste and see and know that the Lord is good. And to know that blessed is he and happy is the one who trusts in him. Father, wherever we're at today, may we be obedient in our heart to call upon you and pray and believe and know that above you there is no one else. And commit ourselves anew and afresh to you as we believe and ask this all together in the mighty, matchless name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm Bill Gregory. We hope you've enjoyed our service today. We'd like to hear from you. Check out our website at swissomeparkpmchurch.com for information on how to get in touch with us. God bless you.